Hello, my name is Alexander Mardvintsev and in this tutorial I'll show an implementation of a very simple self-organizing system that models the alignment of uh, cells on a grid. This uh, model is very simple to implement yet demonstrates pretty curious behavior. This exploration was inspired by uh, Boyd's model uh, by Craig Reynolds, uh, but this model may be seen as one of the most popular models of a self-organizing systems. And in this exploration, I'm going to take one of three rules that this model consists on, namely the alignment rule, and simplify everything as possible. In particular, I'll be using a grid of cells instead of a particle system, and those grids are going to try to steer their orientation toward the average of their neighbors. So let's proceed to coding. I'll be using Colab notebooks in this tutorial. Create a new notebook. I'm connecting to the runtime. Note that at the beginning I'll not be using GPU and switch to GPU runtime a little bit later. I'm using code snippets feature of Colab. This is a collection of little pieces of code that can be copied into the current notebook and contains a lot of useful tricks. What's even more interesting, this list, snippet list can be populated by user by adding notebook URLs to this uh, list in settings dialog. So I'm copying a cell that contains a few image and video manipulation functions that I'll be using in this notebook. I execute the cell and collapse it. Now I want to create a two-dimensional grid of unit vectors. First, I'll start by creating an array of angles that represent their directions. Angles span the range from 0 to uh, 2 pi. Now let's convert those angles into two-dimensional vectors. I do this by stacking cosines and sines of angles over the channel dimension. So I'm getting the array that has two channels. Let's write a helper function to visualize this, this array. I will be using RGB images to visualize the uh, array of directions. So I'm padding the XY array with uh, one more channel of zeros and then I'm multiplying the values by 0 0.5 and adding 0 0.5 because I expect values of x, y to be in the range from minus, minus 1 to 1 and I want to compress this range to uh, 0, 1 range to be able to display all possible directions uh, as, colors, as colors on screen. Okay, that's what visualization of randomly initialized array looks like. Now let's build the alignment model. It's as simple as that. Uh, on each iteration, I compute the average of 3 by 3 neighborhood of each cell by using a standard average pooling, pre pooling primitive that's available in most machine learning frameworks. And then I am normalizing the computed vectors over the channel dimension. This is what the visualization of cell orientations look after 10 iterations. So we see that there is probably something interesting going on. Let's visualize the dynamics of cells in a video. That's what the first uh, hundred iterations of the described cell alignment model looks like. And now I'd like to visualize the behavior over a longer time span. 
but at later stages the dynamics becomes very slow and I'd like to accelerate video two times every second uh, so that we see the dynamics at various time scales. Now I'm generating the video that uh, consists of the number of frames equal to frames per second multiplied by 4, so the total length of the video is going to be 4 seconds, total duration, and the number of steps that is uh, performed between each frame is uh, dependent on the current second, so I divide uh, frame number by number of frames per second, and uh, take the corresponding power of 2. So each second video accelerates 2 times. We can also add the frame counter to measure the actual number of uh, model iterations that we uh, simulate. So uh, simulating 450 iterations together with uh, video recording takes uh, almost four seconds. If we want to simulate the system over longer time spans we may want to switch to GPU runtime. Let's have a rough estimate of acceleration that we get uh, from GPU by uh, first computing the longer sequence of frames on CPU. Okay, on CPU runtime, computing a six second video that covers almost like 2000 iterations took 13 seconds. Now I'm switching the runtime type to GPU accelerated. I need to execute the boilerplate again. And let's remember it was. 13 seconds. The first execution of this cell will take uh, longer because uh, that's actually the moment where parts of TensorFlow get uh, initialized when the kernels get instantiated, but subsequent runs will be much shorter. Okay, the first execution took 12 seconds, but the second execution will take 1.5 seconds for running the same number of iterations. Now we can render a longer clip. Let's iterate, let's generate a 10 seconds video. This took us around 6 seconds and now we can explore the long-term behavior of this system more closely. We see that the grid contains the vector field that is uh, mostly uniform but contains some singularities and then those singularities seem to attract to each other and once they get pulled closely they annihilate and uh, the field becomes smooth at the region at the region of their collision so when i saw this behavior i remembered that i've already seen something very similar the complexityexplorables.org website contains plenty of simulations of various self-organizing, physical or lifelike systems. And one of those simulations that is called uh, spin wheels demonstrates a system of oscillators on a grid. Those oscillators align their phases given a particular rule and the dynamics of this system is almost identical to what we've implemented. Actually, I think that it can be shown that uh, this rule produces exactly the same behavior that averaging of and renormalization of vectors that we've implemented. But this rule aggregates neighbors uh, nonlinearly, so it would be a bit harder to implement with the modern machine learning framework that tend to contain only linear uh, 
expert sale operations like convolutions or average pooling or well maximum pooling is not linear but this is not something we want here in particular uh, another model that is very similar to the one we implemented is called uh, self-organization specially arranged magnets and it even has a discrete version that allows you to visualize uh, the dynamics of those little magnetic needles that tend to arrange themselves with the uh, average neighbor direction. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. I'm going to put links to the final notebook and other resources in the video description and thank you for your attention.